Can you describe the type of failure scenarios that you might see in a data center? Hey everyone, I'm super excited to be here today with Adam to discuss a TPM mock interview. We're going to be talking about data centers today. Um, but before we jump into it, Adam, as usual, could you share a little bit more about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I have experience in data center consolidation and infrastructures based on my experience working active duty in the Air Force, also migrations in Accenture, capacity planning at Google, and most recently as a consumer of AWS at Airbnb. Awesome. Well, let's jump right into it. So um, the first question that I just want to ask you right off the bat is, can you describe the type of failure scenarios that you might see in a data center? Great question. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we see failures uh, all the time in data centers. And you know, it, I think it seems like a pretty far away concept, but these, are, these data centers are hosting data for all the applications that we use and love every day. Uh, the first I'd like to mention is just component and server level failures. So just think about what actually a server is. It's a machine with a CPU, RAM, disk, and actually running uh, whatever application we're trying to access. Uh, there are failure rates of uh, those RAMs and uh, CPU. And at Google scale, when I was working at YouTube in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of servers, we'd see failures uh, every day. In fact, there is a dedicated team called hardware operators who are riding around on scooters and swapping out components on a daily basis. Another somewhat common uh, failure scenario was site power outages. Uh, this can happen, you know, it's not so much on a daily basis, but if there's a failure in the power grid, uh, local fire or disaster going on, um, or even sometimes cases with diesel generators, you know, people who are familiar with data centers also know that they have backup power um, in the form of batteries and flywheels. So uh, definitely a lot of different things that can go wrong. Uh, those type of uh, power sources, though, are primarily used to move from when the power goes out and then trying to get the diesel generators on. And I have to mention with site power outages being very real, um, think about the seasonal hurricane season in the U.S., specifically the southeast, and that every year we sort of see an exercise of moving our jobs and loads from one site to another, sort of trying to be ready and anticipate for this. And then, of course, there's the least popular, but probably uh, you know, the number one reason why we see a downtime of failures, which is changes in software or configurations. Uh, you know, unfortunately, this can happen if a source app, uh, someone puts out something, there wasn't proper QA or testing done on it, or if you have uh, the situation where you're with a third-party cloud provider, an employee over there could make a policy change, revoking, uh, revoking all of the access uh, on accident. Uh, so these type of things definitely happen. Totally. Um, thanks for coming to those scenarios. Um, I kind of want to change gears in the interview just a little bit to ask you a follow-up question. That's a little bit more of like an estimation question. Um, and so sometimes in the interviews, we'll, we'll sort of uh, push you around in different ways. Um, but the question that I have for you today is, um, you know, could you estimate something like how much power or maybe how many wind turbines that it might take to power the global data center footprint of a company like Google? Got it. Uh, so just so I understand correctly, and I'll give you a little idea of how I'm going to approach this. I'll first try and estimate how much power uh, the data centers consume and then how much they generate. And you're sort of looking for a number of sort of instantaneously or today how much power we'd use? That's right. Yep. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I would say just on the number of data centers alone, there's 20. And this actually publicly available information uh, for Google uh, 12 are in the US, five are in Europe, two in Asia, and one is in South America. Um, off the top of my head, I remember that data centers consume about 15 megawatts or more of power, but I want to spend a little bit of time and validate that. Is that okay with you? Sounds good. All right, yeah. So a server consumes about 200 watts of power. And when you have multiple servers in a rack, a rack is just like a cabinet in the data center, uh, about 50 servers. Uh, can go into this rack. So if you multiply those two numbers out, that ends up being about 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts per rack. Uh, so now I have to think how many racks there are in a data center. Uh, it can depend on the size of the data center, but I'm going to use somewhere around 2,000 racks just based on my experience of see, having seen this number. And if I multiply those two out, that ends up being about 20,000 kilowatts, or if I go ahead and translate over the units, 20 megawatts. Um, so this is how much a single data center would take, uh, but it is Google. And so we have to think that 
things are a little bit bigger, I'd like to add a scale up factor here of about 2.5, uh, just because there's multiple data center facilities on uh, each of these given campuses that we're trying to estimate. Uh, so I'll use 2.5 uh, multiplier on top of my 20 megawatts. That would tell me that each site is using about 50 megawatts. And so if I go back, uh, I told you that there were 20 different sites, uh, each consuming 50 megawatts. That wound up being about a thousand megawatts. If I translate over, that's one gigawatt of power. Um, yeah, so now that I have the power consumption of the data centers, I'll move into the second part where you mentioned the wind turbines and power generation. Um, like off the top of my head, I actually don't know how much uh, power wind turbine uh, can create, but I remember from my graduate research that solar power is about one by one uh, meter can generate one kilowatt of power. So I'm just gonna assume at this point that one wind turbine can do about one kilowatt. And so because I had estimated one gigawatt, that ends up being uh, 1 million wind turbines to power Google's data center footprints. Got it, that's a lot of wind turbines. Um, do we feel like that was an overestimate or an underestimate or what would you change if you had more time to kind of analyze this answer? Yeah, yeah definitely that's, that's, uh, that's a big number, um, but also using it and operating at Google scale, uh, I think this is pretty appropriate. Um, I think out of the framework that I laid out, you know, we can sort of go and change some variables. So if a wind turbine didn't use uh, or couldn't generate one kilowatt, or if there were slightly different power calculations for servers or racks, uh, we can go back and adjust these things. But I feel pretty confident and good with my number. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, we can kind of like uh, debrief or, or, you know, pause the interview. I would just love to hear, yeah, anything else you wanted to share with our audience or any other high level thoughts on how that interview was for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a challenging question. And I certainly think, you know, not having worked in this world before, I probably wouldn't have been able to answer it. So I, I didn't learn how to do this overnight. Uh, definitely took practice and working with these different domain areas. Uh, really, the takeaway for folks is, you know, this question involved a lot of power and consumption, also just understanding the space and size of a data center, but that might not be your area of expertise, and that's okay. Uh, when you receive these type of questions, it's important to focus on the process and sort of be able to regenerate and recreate uh, the scenario that you did to create your number again. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I also, I wanna harp on, you know, really introducing those different factors and being able to defend them. And using this process, you can probably go forward and tackle any question because the type of interview questions you get, they'll be looking for you and how assessing how you tackle ambiguity. Totally. Um, well, I thought you did a great job answering and um, very thoughtful and you went through it in very good detail, obviously in more time, digging deeper into some of those things around how you might have changed your answer or trade-offs or scenarios where you might change it um, are always really valuable. But overall, I thought you did an excellent job. Um, and it's always a pleasure having you here, Adam. So um, thank you again for being on the show to, to provide your answer. All right, thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.